Amen. Let's let's look at Matthew's gospel, uh, chapter number fourteen, verse twenty-two through thirty-three, and uh, it's on the uh, screen there also. And let me know when you're ready to read. Uh, all right, let's read. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and to go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had... He was alone. Disciples saw him terrified. Jesus, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Come, he said. Peter came out and walked on the water. When he saw that the wind was Lord save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him. Faith. Why did you doubt? Truly, you're the Son of God. Father, we know you have not called us here to worship, not to hear from you. And so we ask that you would speak to us from your word. Clearly, God, speak to us and let us understand your purpose for this word in our lives. Oh God, we we want to hear from you. We need to hear from you. We thank you for this moment in worship. So in your anointing, I submit myself to you. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart now overflow in a word of to your people that is acceptable to you. So bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. The town. I wanted to talk with you from the subject close encounters of the faith kind. Would you say that? Close encounters of the the faith kind. In 1969, uh, Apollo uh, blasted off with Neil Armstrong and Ed Aldrin, Michael Collins to go to the moon. Four days later, Armstrong and Aldrin landed on the moon in the lunar module while Collins stayed in orbit doing experiments and taking pictures. On that 20th day of July, Neil Armstrong became the first man to, to step on the moon. You have probably heard that now NASA is planning to go to Mars. And by the 2030s and the 2030s, uh, the plans are to have astronauts walk on Mars. Uh, they announced this goal of having boots on Mars. 
Uh, Dava Newman, their deputy administrator, says astronauts will have to become Earth independent and devise ways to utilize resources that the Red Planet has to offer for this to happen. I say this to you, and you probably have uh, never wanted to and never will walk on the moon or Mars. And if you came up in the Motown era, maybe all you've ever done is the moonwalk. But it is my desire in this message to, to get you to a level of faith to where you will master walking in faith, in confidence. There's so much to learn from this text. You recall confidence is the feeling or consciousness of God's power or reliance on God's promises. It is faith, a belief that God will act in a right, proper, or an effective way in, in your circumstance, in your situation. And in our text, the disciples have been sent by Jesus by boat to go to the other side. Go ahead of me and travel on this Sea of Galilee. Uh, Jesus and the other Gospels let us know that he wanted to be alone and to, to pray, as he often did. They sent the crowds away. The disciples got in the boat and began their excursion on the sea in obedience to Jesus' command. Uh, the text lets us know that when evening came, Jesus was praying while the disciples were in the boat on the sea. And they were about midway on the sea. They were being tossed by the waves. A sudden storm had come up the Sea of Galilee was known for this because of the winds that came down from Mount Lebanon and Mount Hermon. It would swoop down upon the sea. And also because the Jordan River uh, flowed into the sea. Uh, the word lets us know in the Greek uh, that this toss, this thing that they were in was a great trouble time. Uh, the word in the Greek also means tortured. It was that, that rough. The word says here that the wind was contrary. They were trying to go in one direction, but the wind opposed them. I want you to know in a life of faith, often you will find that it comes with winds that are not convenient. We like to think that because God has called us to do something or because we're doing something for God, that the winds are going to be convenient. But oftentimes you find in doing God's work that you're going up against a headwind rather than having a tailwind. I love it when the pilots say we're going to get in a little early. We've got a tailwind. But many times in the life of faith, we're up against headwinds with contrary winds the life of faith we have close encounters 
with contrary winds. You don't believe me? Start that business. Look for the contrary wind of trying to find trustworthy employees. Get married and expect the contrary winds of division as you try to become to become one. Enroll in school and watch for the contrary winds of tuition, fees, schedules, and crazy professors. The Bible lets us know it was the fourth watch. And this watch was the time of 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And the disciples had been out there struggling for some time when, lo and behold, Jesus comes walking on the sea. Can you imagine that? You're struggling. The winds are coming against you. The waves are beating up against the boat and getting in there. And you look up and there is this figure that you recognize or think you recognize that Jesus was walking on the, the sea. But when Jesus got near them, instead of joy, they were disturbed. Uh, they were so disturbed, they did not recognize Jesus. Anybody ever been like that? When your stuff was so raggedy, that you didn't even have any idea that Jesus was anywhere close. You couldn't even remember a scripture to quote or a song to sing. I have been there. I have been there. These 12 hand-picked men by Jesus had heard him preach, teach, pray, perform miracles, but here they were out there on the Sea of Galilee, overcome by fear. <laughs> Sounds so much like us. They had no feeling or consciousness of Jesus' power or any promise. They didn't even see it as a promise that he told them, I'll meet you over on the other side. They're out there. They did not have faith or belief that God would at this time in their storm act in a right, proper, or effective way. They were overcome by fear. And they did not recognize Jesus. <laughs> when he got there, they were distressed, discouraged, disturbed. <laughs> I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor to look for him in your storm. What did you tell him? Look for him. See, your storm, your storm, if you know anything about one, is an encounter of the faith kind. It's an encounter of the faith kind. There's something supposed to happen in the spiritual realm while you're in your storm. You're supposed to be able to operate on a different level. But these guys were distressed, discouraged, and disturbed. As looking at this text, we should always expect his presence in our storms. 
I thought I'd get a few more amens. We should always expect his presence in our storms. Come on, you may need to hear that again to build up your face. Always expect his presence in your storm. Psalm 46 and 1 say, He is, God is our refuge and strength and an ever-present help when we're in trouble. He wants to encounter you, but it's a faith encounter. It's a faith encounter. Whenever he's present, we must realize that his power is present. <laughs> Years ago, when we, uh, after we'd gone through our uh, terrible situation with our construction program, I had to preach uh, out of town uh, in Jacksonville at Potter's House for Bishop McLaughlin and I entitled that message looking at this text don't worry about the wind don't worry about the wind and that's what confidence calls for you not to worry about the wind that's up against you the wind of distress the wind of discouragement the wind that disturbs you don't worry about it Come on, say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Recognize this is an encounter of the faith kind. <laughs> we got to have some faith. We got to have some faith. But here's the thing you, you have to realize. One has to realize that the storm has not come to take you out. It's just a test of faith. <laughs> it doesn't come to take you out. It comes to test your faith. Do you really believe what you've been singing? Do you really believe what you've been praying? Do you really believe what you've been reading in the Word of God? It's a test comes to test your prayer life. It comes to make you prepare to live on a different level in God. And, you know, it also comes, and this is, we don't often look at the test like this, but a faith test can also come to see if you're walking in self-confidence. Self-reliance. Self-knowledge. Your storm is nothing but a faith encounter. Uh, when Mark records this story and he says, uh, in it, he says he came walking to them and he uses this term and he would have passed them by. And John MacArthur points this out that Jesus decide, really desired to come alongside of them in a test of their faith to watch them as they were rowing and hope that he would find a level of faith that they should have had because this was a faith encounter. And why would Jesus expect that? Because when you read your Bibles, in Matthew, the 8th chapter, Jesus was on the boat with them on this same sea when a storm suddenly came up. And in this time, Jesus was asleep on the boat. And they got all afraid and they came and woke Jesus up and asked him, you, you know we came up in the church and said, Master, do you care? If we perish, <laughs> the same sea, probably the same boat, same people, this time Jesus is not in the boat with them. 
In Matthew, in, in that message, uh, in that time, Jesus rebuked them, the winds of the sea. He rebuked them before he rebuked the winds. Here they are on this occasion crying out in fear. So here's what Jesus says to them. Take courage. Take courage. I know you're in the storm. Take courage. I know things are looking very bad. Take courage. I know you feel very vulnerable right now, but take courage. I know you're thinking about giving up, but do what? Take courage. It's time for some God for them. So why, why Jesus, why are you saying this? How, how could you say take courage in this storm? Because the next three words are why he could say that. Because he says, it is I take courage because it is I. I'm no ghost. I have come for this encounter. I am with you. I am near you. It is I. This I, the theologians say, have power. Powerful, has powerful ramifications because it takes you back to Exodus chapter 3 when Moses was on the backside of the mountains and he had a faith encounter with the burning bush and God told him I want you to go and, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go and you know Moses was making all kind of excuses but God told him at that point I have seen the, the, the hurting and the suffering of my people and I have come down I've come down to help them and then Moses said well if I go who am I going to tell the people who sent me he said tell them I am has sent you. I am that I am has sent you. I am. That means I'll be what I want to be. So take courage. It is I. <laughs> Not your fishing buddies. It is I. Not the Roman government. It is I. If you were on the, on the boat with Gene, it, not the Coast Guard. I'm your savior, your deliverer, your healer, your creator, your provider, your sustainer, your redeemer. It is I. I'm with you in this storm. When Jesus said that, faith rose up in Peter. And Peter said, Lord, and, and this word Lord, it, it means master. It means he was giving him the utmost reverence and respect. Lord, if it's you, Command me, summon me, tell me to come to you on this water. A surge of God for this rose up in Peter. And this, this, this part of the message may not be for everybody. 
but I'm, I'm here today to tell you that there are times when a surge of confidence comes on a believer that puts a desire on them to do the extraordinary. Uh, a surge. You hear a message. You're in a worship. You're in a prayer meeting. You hear a song. You've been fasting and praying and all of a sudden there's a surge that comes up on you that makes you want to do the extraordinary. Peter wanted to get out of the boat. But he was smart. I don't want to act on a foolish impulse. So that's why he said, Lord, if it's you, if it's not you, I don't want to jump out here. I don't want to do nothing crazy. But Lord, if it's you, and somebody here today, I know you have that feeling. You, you have this urge. You want to do something extraordinary. But you have, you're having these dreams of doing something extraordinary but you're saying Lord if it's you you I've heard this still vo small voice but Lord if it's you the, the scripture keeps waking me up God I keep I hearing the scripture over and over in my meditation Lord if it's you I wake up in the morning singing this praise song, this song of faith. I want to do something extraordinary, but Lord, if it's you, I want to make sure it's you. Before I jump, I want to make sure it's you, call it. If it's you. If it's you, call I just suspect that there are some Peters in the house this morning. There are some Peters. If somebody wants to do the extraordinary. I mean, you, you, you want to break a wave. You're believing. You, you sense God calling you to do something different. If you're like, you're like Peter, if you, you want to do something that you've never done before, you want to go against the norm, the norm on your job, the norm in your family. You want to do something that is truly beyond human capacity. God, I want to do something beyond what I can handle. You want to experience the supernatural in a new way. You've experienced it in one way, but you want to experience it in a new way. You want to take a risk that others don't even think about or refuse to take. You want to stretch the limits of your faith. Somebody say stretch. Stretch the limits of my faith, God. I believed you for one thing last year, but this year I want to try something else. You want your present encounter with Jesus to be different than it was before. God, I just, I simply want to get out of the boat. I want to try it. If it's you, God, I want to do it. I want to try it. I want to go there. Like I said, I know this is not for everybody. But if, if it's for you, Go ahead and say it, I want to walk on water. I want to walk on water. God, I want to walk. You know, Peter was so caught up in this thing, he, he forgot 
Did he ask Jesus to let him walk when it was during a storm? You know, it's, it's impossible already to walk on water when there's no storm. He asked him, can I walk during a storm? Confidence, y'all, will cause you to pray on a different level. It will cause you to stop asking God for the same old, same old. It's a, a different level. Let me achieve this. Let me open this. Let me do this. For some of you in this room today, you may need to say, God, tell me. Tell me to open up that business I've been talking about for years. Let me walk on that water. Lord, let me start that ministry. It's in my heart. The passion is burning to do something for those kids or those couples or those hungry people or those poor. God, tell me to go on that mission. Let me become a missionary. God, let me walk on water that I haven't walked. Let me do something. God, just, just tell me I'll go. I submit to you that faith should not keep you bound to your boat. It shouldn't keep you bound to your boat. Shouldn't make you just want to be satisfied. Let me just get through this stuff. Let me just get to that other side. That boat represents your measure of safety, your measure of security, your measure of comfort. And for some of you, your boat is your degree. Your boat is your position. Your boat is your friendships. Your boat is your present economic status. Your boat is your boo. Your boat is your sugar daddy. Somebody say, get out of that boat. Listen to me first, Matt. What what's going on in this country and what's going on, especially in our community, we need more Peters. We need people to get out of the boat. Stop complaining, get out of the boat. Stop blaming, get out of the boat. But in response to Peter's faith, Jesus said, come. <laughs> He's still inviting people to leave the boat. Come. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that faith pleases. So Peter got out. He got out. And Peter's level of confidence got him out of the boat and walking on water. Look at the scriptures toward Jesus. Toward him. That's what our faith should call us to. 
toward him. He got out. His level of confidence got him out and walking toward Jesus. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, what level of faith do you have? Ask them that. What level? What level? Listen to me. Godfidence is not just praying bold prayers. It's getting out of the boat. It's not just putting your foot in the water. It's getting out of the boat. It's not just admiring Jesus. Oh, he's a water walking Jesus. It's getting out of the boat. Confidence is from time to time taking a supernatural stroll. It's leaving others behind and not worrying about what they think. Sometimes other people keep us in our boat. Peter did what no ordinary man had done and has ever done. Come on, repeat after me. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. You know, what's interesting, the text doesn't say how far he walked. It just says he did walk. And it doesn't matter. I want you to know it doesn't matter how far. It doesn't matter how far. What does matter is that you do have a faith that from time to time will get you out of your boat. Now, here's the thing that it gets. He got out, and once he's out walking, he noticed that the wind was still blowing and the waves were still blowing. So here's what you need to also know. Your storm will not stop because you exercise faith. Your faith is not to stop the storm. Your faith is for you to endure the storm. It didn't stop. Jesus, look, if you're going to call us out of the boat, would you please stop the storm first? Would you please make the waters calm? Would you please lay everything out for us that would be real smooth, real comfortable, real convenient? This text does tell us, though, that Peter, being human, began to sink. And it tells us why. Because he took his eye off of Jesus and started focusing on the storm. He began to sink. So that lets us know we've got to keep our eye on who? Jesus. Whenever you look at your storm, what you're going through, it will bring fear. Whenever you look at Jesus, it will bring faith. It's simple. Either you're going to look, or have a look that will bring you fear or a look that will bring you faith. Does that make sense? 
he had sense enough to say, Lord, save me. And that's what a lot of times when you're out there and you've taken a, a risk of faith, you will have to say that, Lord, save me. I'm out here. Help me. <laughs> oh, Lord. And there are two immediates in the text. The second immediate is so important here because it says immediately when he called for Jesus' help. <laughs> now, here's what you need to know. The faith that gets you out of the boat must be sustained to walk on the water. Uh, many of us want the, the grade for signing up for the course and not for completing the course. You have to have that same faith on the water that it took you to get out of the boat. Does that make sense? Listen to what Jesus says to him. Then I'll get out of here. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? <laughs> this little faith means insufficient faith. He didn't have sufficient faith to keep walking. And the word doubt here is, why did you waver? Why did you become uncertain? When Jesus pulled him back, he and Jesus got in the boat. And the text says, right after they got out into the boat, it says, the storm ceased. That's why you know it was just a test. This was a test of faith. This was an encounter of the faith kind. Jesus didn't even speak to the waves or the wind. They just immediately stopped. Because this was a faith test. And I want you to pass your faith test. Can you say amen to that? Amen. When he got when they got on the boat, all of them they just began to worship Jesus, worship him, worship him. They reverenced him, and they said, "Truly, you are the the Son of God." They worshipped and confessed. Everybody say worship and confess what you need to do when you get your your close encounter of the faith kind. It should end up causing you to worship and confess. Yes, you are God. You are God. And thank you for Thank you for being God. Thank you.